of these engine parts have been thoroughly inspected. Necessary repairs and replacements have been made, and all clearances have been checked. You're ready to reassemble the engine and replace it in the airplane. The first step is to assemble the connecting rods to the crankshaft. Check the tag to see where the rod goes, and remove the tag. Now separate the two parts of the rod and oil the bearing surfaces thoroughly, both on the crankshaft and the rod itself. Install the rod on the crankshaft throw, oil the cap, and bolt the two parts together. Install the rod so that the number will face upward when the rod is in its cylinder port. have been installed, tighten the nuts carefully with a torque wrench to the value specified in the table of limits. The castle nuts used here must be safetyed with cutter pins. Tap the pin in with a soft face mallet and then bend the two ends back neatly. are safety. Use a flurry gauge to check the end clearance of each rod on its throw. You'll find a specified end clearance given in the table of limits. Now to reassemble the gear case cover. Put a new gasket on the oil screen and dip the screen in clean engine oil. Then screw it in, wipe off excessive oil, and tighten it securely. Install a plastic plug in the thermometer hole temporarily to keep dirt out. A new oil seal should be installed in the tachometer drive housing. This is a very snug fit. Tap the new seal into place with a soft face mallet. Then install a new gasket on the tachometer drive housing. The tachometer drive housing and oil pump gears are installed together. Oil the two gears and install them. Install the oil pump cover plate over the studs and the gear shaft and safety it. To prevent the tachometer drive oil seal from being pushed out of place when you install it, insert a rod through the seal. Match the end of the rod to the shaft 
and guide the tachometer drive housing down over the shaft. Then screw the tachometer drive housing in and tighten it. Don't over tighten it. Notice that it has a left hand thread so the rotation of the shaft won't loosen it. Next, install the oil pressure relief valve. Use a new gasket on the cap. Then install the valve, the spring, and the cap, and tighten the assembly securely. This completes the assembly of the gear case cover, but there's one more check to make. Test the oil, oil pump gears to be sure they run freely. They shouldn't bind. Now you're ready to mount the 2-4 crankcase on the engine stand. Before inserting the hydraulic tappets in their guides, remove the plunger and dip the tappet in clean oil. Then insert it in its guide. guide. Do the same with the other three. Then install the tappet in the other crank case. They'll remain in place in the 2-4 crank case, but in the 1-3 crank case, you'll have to prevent them from dropping out when you turn the case over to install it. You can do this by temporarily slipping a push rod hose connection over the end of the tappet on the outside of the case. Now make sure each of the bearings gets a thorough oiling. Use oil very liberally as you reassemble the engine. Oil each of the bearing surfaces of the camshaft and lay the camshaft and its bearings in the crankcase. Now oil the bearing surfaces of the crankshaft and lay the crankshaft and its bearings in the crankcase. Be careful to guide the two and four connecting rods through the cylinder ports so they won't damage the sides of the ports.
Check the front end clearance of the crankshaft with a feeler gauge. You'll find specifications for this end clearance in your table of limits. Make a similar end clearance check on the camshaft. Dip the oil seal in oil and push it securely into place on the front of the crankshaft. Apply a very thin film of sealing compound to the outside edges of the cutting surfaces of both halves of the crankcase. Now you can install the 1-3 crankcase on the 2-4 case. Guide the one and three connecting rods carefully through the cylinder ports and be sure you get the dowel bolt to their proper locations. With the two sections fitted together, you can reinstall the bolts that hold them. Before you put all the bolts in, however, check the crankshaft and the camshaft to be sure they move freely. Then you can finish bolting the crankcase together. All the nuts should tighten evenly to the torque value given in the table of limits. This will prevent undue stresses on the crankcase. These nuts are safetyed with pal nuts. The correct, correct way to install a pal nut is to run it down finger tight with the open end up and then give it a quarter turn with a wrench. Now reinstall the camshaft gear in position for correct valve timing. A valve timing mark is stamped on the side of one of the cam gear teeth. To synchronize the two shafts, that mark should mesh between the two timing marks stamped on the crankshaft gear. To position the camshaft, reach through a cylinder port and rotate it until the bolt holes line up. They'll only match in one way. Then install the bolts that secure the gear to the camshaft. Tighten the bolts evenly to the torque value specified in your table of limits and safety them. To check the backlash of the camshaft and crankshaft gears, Set up a dial indicator with its arm flush against the tooth of the camshaft gear. Now, holding the crankshaft gear with your left hand, move the camshaft gear back and forth. The amount of play shown on the dial should be checked against your table of limits. If you have too much play, you will have to replace the gear. This one is okay. Now you're ready to install the gear case cover, and the first step is to install a new gasket over the studs. This gasket has to go on flush against the crankcase so the holes fit properly over the studs 
and line up with the main oil passages in the crankcase. Before you install the cover, give both gears a generous application of oil. Then put some oil into the oil pump to lubricate those gears. And fit the gear case cover on the studs and assemble the washers and nuts. Tighten the nuts evenly to the torque value given in the table of limits and safety them with pound nuts. At this point, you can safety the oil screen to a gear case cover that. However, do not safety the oil pressure relief valve cap at this time, as the final adjustment will be made when you run in the engine. Now turn the engine upside down so you can get at the oil sump opening. With a sharp knife, cut off the portion of the gear case cover gasket that crosses the opening. Be sure not to let any of the gasket material drop into the case. Then install the oil suction tube for the new gasket in the tapped hole in the bottom of the gear case cover. Screw it in and tighten it with a wrench. The tube should be safety to the gear case cover. Put a new gasket for the oil sump on the mounting studs. Then fit the oil sump on the six mounting studs, being careful not to damage the tube as you do, you do so. Reinstall the nuts and safety them. Reinstall the oil plug with the new gasket in the bottom of the sump and, and safety it. Now you can remove the connections that you use to hold the tappets in place and rotate the engine to a position convenient for installing the hydraulic plungers. Dip the plungers in oil and pump them several times to remove the air and fill them with oil. Insert the units, tube end first, in the cam follower body. Then insert the tappet cups. The units have all been, all been installed. Put a new gasket over the studs and replace the push rod housing flange over the studs and gasket. Install the nuts and safety them with pal nuts. Now install the propeller hub key. 
tapping it into place carefully with a soft-faced mallet. You're ready now to install the pistons and cylinders. When they're all in place, reinstall all the spark plugs and reconnect the ignition wires. Check the timing of the valves, referring to your engine manual for opening and closing points. And finally, with the engine reinstalled on the airplane, mount the two magnetos and time them to the engine. This will put the plane in readiness for a ground run-up, after which there should be a final check before the flight test.